Welcome, welcome to Raiders of the Lost Art, episode five. We have a uh, pretty jam-packed episode for you today. Um, this whole series, as you may or may not be aware, um, is a series dedicated to um, high-depth audio or the art of active listening. So Raiders of the Lost Art, the Lost Art is this art of active listening and high-depth audio. Um, the series that we've actually created here has been, well, this is episode five, the last four episodes have been dedicated to partially decoding some of my tracks off the, my new album, The Code, and how I approach um, different techniques and how I synthesize different patterns in nature, biology, science, into music. Uh, and then how that encoding process creates an environment or an ambisonic environment whereby the listener has a multi-layered listening experience. So today we've got um, a great bunch of guests. We have John Pashada again from Jetpack Artist Group and we have Red Horse Rivera. Red Horse uh, worked with me on this track. He's the voice at the beginning. Um, so I'll introduce them shortly, but I think what we'll do is we'll start by, um, I'll get logic up and going and we'll start playing with this session. Today's episode, uh, we're gonna be talking about how I've been, been inspired by the magnetic resonance of planets, orbits, how I've used that and synthesized that back to music. Also, waterfall guitar techniques, how and why I created this track, what the, the track says, and how the music represents what the track says. Um, in the previous episodes, we've talked about frequencies and how frequencies change the human physiology with an intended result. If you know the science behind that, we've talked about how to turn patterns of colors like camouflage into sound rhythmic sequences and a bunch of other stuff. The war guitar, it goes on and on and on. So we're, we're trying to sort of herald um, and give people an inspiration to to look at new ways to create music and new ways to to go deep into listening to music. So, without any further delay, um, let me um, let me jump into the track. By the way, um, this is episode five. If you are liking what we're doing, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, the link will be below, and um, I'll also put a buy link to the album if you don't already have a copy. So, without that being said, let's get into the the track here. So. Um, I'm going to just pull up the track and we're just going to play through it and then I'm going to bring in the guests and we're going to have a, a, a chat about the story behind the track and then we're going to get into the in-depth nuts and bolts of this. So here we go, let's play that, play it. The journey of life is filled with meaning. We just need to know where to look. The reflections of our ancestors, the wisdom of the animals, the nutrition from Earth, the love of all of our people. This leads us to the understanding of the Great Spirit. We were all on the path of the journeyman.
Okie dokie. Well, there you go. That was um, that's a playthrough of the track. Um, so what I'm going to do now without oh, hi guys, um, Dave, Nathan, Jim, Daz, all great to have you here. Um, so it's my pleasure now to add my two esteemed guests here. We have um, John Pashada. John, welcome. And hey. Red Horse Rivera. Hey guys, <laughs> how you doing? Um, let me just make sure you can. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Ah, oh, great, awesome, fantastic, great. Um, so let's start with um, John. You're a, a becoming a, a regular of the of the show now. Um, for the, those that haven't tuned in before, can you just give us a, a little bit of background about who you are and Jetpack? Yeah, sure. So Jetpack Artist Ventures is a holding company, and we have a couple different business units. We have Jetpack Label Group, um, which really kind of is the back engine for artists. We kind of strengthen, support, and sell on behalf of artists. Really kind of doing the, the dirty work, the non-artist fun part of being an artist. Um, and then we have a sync, a film and television unit called the Sync Center. We do sync supervision and clearance for filmmakers and directors. And then we have a training um, component to what we do. It's called Hacking Music. Um, basically helping artists um, think like a hacker and kind of see patterns around building a business around their art rather than just um, thinking magical thoughts. I think that's uh, that's where we sort of gelled, wasn't it? Just that, that sort of synthesis of, you know, this, Hey, what can we do with this crazy bit of bit of work that I'm that I'm working on here? And it was like, there's probably only one person in the world that might actually understand what what I'm doing, and that's John. And we sort it. of, yeah. I mean, I've been a fan of Finbar for years, and when we talked about collaborating last year, I was like, man, that's this is exactly you know, you're the genius, you're the creative force out front. And we just want to come behind you and help point it and focus it and strengthen it and and hopefully the right way so great I great what you're doing. Uh, red horse what yeah. a legend you are sir um <laughs> so the uh, for those uh, that are tuning in right now red horse is the incredible voice at the beginning um uh red horse you want to just give us a little bit of background about yourself where you came from where you are now and what you do now uh we're from mescalero mescalero apaches uh on that uh on that reservation the chiricahua live and the leapon Le apaches live uh, I went touring around the world and uh, met some people in Hong Kong, and uh, I helped them with their lighting and that because I have a degree in electronics and a degree in electronic engineering. And I just gave them a hand, and they asked me to come out to Australia. And then I, I, I toured around Australia and, and did a tour called Greece, and then I did another musical tour called Shout. And so hmm. at, during that time, I was traveling all around Australia. I met my wife here. And uh, she had three little girls that were like eight, nine, and 10. And now those little girls are like uh, 30, 31, and 32. And they don't call me Red Horse. They call me Dad. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we, we run our own, we run our own uh, business, Native American Productions. So it's nativeamerican.com.au on the web. And uh, what we do is uh, we, do, we do healing, physical, and emotional. I do healing, physical, and emotional. Uh, also do home cleanses. Also do, uh, we go to a lot of expos. I do corporate events. I dance. I still sing. I still, uh, Finn Barr was uh, a couple of years ago. He went to a festival I was at and he played the drum for me. And that's how I, I, I met him, by him playing the drum. And then afterwards, we talked about what he wanted to do. And then we uh, went over to the house and did it. <laughs> It, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's been a great ride. Uh, as far as spirituality, uh, uh, I have a lot of help in what I do. It's just not me doing this. Uh, so we have people that come here from all over the Australia and all over the the world to our healing room here in Berwick. Uh, it's a suburb of uh, Melbourne, and uh, they walk here and here with canes, and they walk here with uh, walking sticks, and that. And when they leave, uh, they don't need them. They they really? walk again. Uh, yeah, no pain, no no emotional pain, no physical pain. To, uh, things disappear off their bodies, gross, and and I mean just all kinds of uh, miraculous stuff. So, uh, like I said, I have a lot of help <laughs> from the other side. Awesome. To do this type of work. Well, so um, you know, um, it was interesting because when I, I I came up with this track, so the the track itself that you just heard, there's a lot of stuff going on in it. Um, when I composed this music, 
it's it has two sort of faces to it. It has the 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 wrapper, which is like the candy wrapper, which it just sounds like nice music. But there's a whole heap of stuff below it, and that's what we're going to uncover today. Um, and um, you know, when I when I first wrote the track, the whole track, the journeyman, about is um, the journey of life. Now, when I worked on doing some score for George Lynch for his movie Shadow Nation, George Lynch from Dokken and Lynch Mob. And so when I met George, you know, he was really passionate about um, the plight of the Native Americans and the reservations and what's going on there. So, I, you know, I scored some music and then I went out to some of the different reservations and we stayed with the Hopi tribe and we went out to New Mexico and, and Arizona, me and my wife. And it was interesting listening to their creationist theories and, and just, just the knowledge and the incredible sort of depth of knowledge that they have there. And it sort of got me thinking about this track, The Journeyman. And so the way I look at, uh, I'm, you know, the code, the album is all these hidden intertwining codes that exist that I think exist in, in life. So on the surface, we see each other and we interact and we buy things and we do this and that and the other. But there are elements that we can't see, like the air, like energy, and um, there are patterns that connect this stuff, DNA. We don't see it, but we know it's there. And so what I wanted to try and do is uncover that. And so the journeyman, the, the waterfall guitar, the guitar with all the delays on it, isn't meant to sound like a guitar with delays, even though it does. It's meant to represent the energy that we pass on and when we're talking to someone, when we're sort of connecting on, on you know, an, an, uh, an attraction level or any other level, and how that energy that we leave behind manifests and bounces around and the symphonies that create in the whirlpools of sound. That's why the delays, there's different guitar parts that are playing, and we'll, we'll highlight some of those today in the different timing sequences, but ultimately it just creates this wall of sound that just becomes this embryonic thing into itself beside the playing. So we're gonna dive into that. We're also gonna dive into um, the way I, I looked at the magnetic resonances of the different planets in the solar system, how, where I got that yeah. research from, and how I use the orbital data. And I'm not gonna try and get, blow your minds. I'm, I've got some links and stuff, but I'm gonna go into very simple methods as composers that you can use or as musicians to try and inspire you to find new direction. And look, besides me talking about what I'm doing, part of this purpose is to try and give those that are writing music that are a bit stuck or trying to look for new direction is to try and think about, I didn't think about that. I would love nothing more than you to walk away from this session and go, hey, I've got an idea here and try and explore something that you've never explored before. To me, that's success, right? So with that being said, what I'll do is I'm going to, um, I, where will I start here? Let me actually pull up a new logic session um, and I'll close this one off and I'll open a new one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the how I map the planetary stuff first. So let me uh, do that. That's interesting, Finbar. I've never heard anybody talk about connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah. Well, well, to music composition and planetary. Well, you'll you'll sort of see that now. Um, uh, so even with look with um, when I first did the first track, you know, we're talking about how I used how I manipulated sound frequencies to get intended results. That's a, on a high level, um, and I'll do this on a further episode, the, the Resonics technology, and then how I used the patterns in camouflage and then mapped that to rhythmic sequences. In a way, it's a similar sort of process. It's about where can you find inspiration beyond, oh, here's a three minutes, 30 song with a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and I've got X amount of chords at my disposal. That's fine, mm -hmm. but th there, what I'm trying to say is that there are d different places you can go to find inspiration and what i'm trying to do is just showcase some of those okay so let's get started um i just opened a logic session which is um it looks a little bit crazy but i'm going to explain it so basically what i've tried to do here is try and take inspiration from uh the planets and the solar system and the orbit so why did I try and do that? Well, the track Journeyman, as I mentioned, and I will continue to mention, is about the journey of life. And so what I tried to do is I tried to map each fundamental note frequency of the planets as an experiment to see what sounds I get. And so what I did and how I did that was, um, beside getting all this, was I started with a bit of curiosity and a bit of data. So the very first thing I did was I went to my web browser and I went and did a Google search. And so I started by finding this diagram. So this diagram was the baseline for me creating the different note frequencies for each planet. And it talks about the audio frequencies of the planets based on um, the magnetic resonance and how the 
offset of that resonance works in relation to the Earth's orbit. Now, it all sounds super, super technical, but bear with me, right? So I, I got this, this graph or this, this diagram. Then what I did was I went back to logic and I said, right, what I need to do is I need to create a different track, one for each planet in the solar system and one for the, the moon, right? Being something that also um, is one of our closest neighbors or yeah, closest neighbor. So I, I created Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So each one of these are there. Then what I did was I took the fundamental note frequency out of that chart. So the moon is G sharp with an offset of minus 29. So what I did was I, I ran the offset here in the transpose and I did the same. So Mercury is C sharp with an offset of minus 30. Venus is minus 32. Earth is neutral because it's, it's the point of reference. Mars, etc., etc., etc. So whilst I set the offsets, all I did was I created a single MIDI note. Okay, and there it is there. So that single MIDI note is going into a synthesizer plugin. And that synthesizer plugin, I just created some presets. So you can see it says Moon G sharp. So I created one, but it can be a simple sine wave. It can be anything you want, but you can play around with it. Any sound will do. It, this is not meant to be the exact sound of the planet. It's meant to be a representation of the sound of the planet. So if someone says that's not exactly right, it doesn't matter. The concept here is where I got the inspiration from, okay? Um, and where you can too. So, all right, so that was, that's that G sharp note. Say the Mercury, if I solo that, I don't think you can hear that, but it's a very low, low order sound. Okay. Um, Venus, let's put that in. Earth. Now what's also going on here, guys, is I have, you'll see this, these little dials moving around here. Now that's meant to represent, you'll see the Earth's one is here. And that's not moving, but these other ones are. They're meant to represent the planets orbiting in the solar system. Um, and so as they obviously orbit around the sun, as they change, there's, there's, it's changing the, the, a number of different parameters in how they relate to the Earth in terms of magnetic frequency. But again, without getting super technical, all I did was go to my trusty old web browser and go and look at some diagrams here in terms of how I might be able to get some, some different ideas in terms of how I might map that. And so there were some different sort of concepts here that I took from in terms of being able to build um, a azimuth around how it, the, the planetary rotation happens. It's meant to be just a representation, not to be accurate, okay? And so by doing that, I create this sort of moving soundscape of sounds. Also, what I did was up the top here was I, I started to imitate Schumann resonance. So the Schumann order is, if we look at, um, I'm not a scientist, but my, the simplest explanation is that the Earth, Earth surface and the ionosphere um, are, have a distance apart, then lightning happens all the way around the Earth, and that lightning creates a magnetic resonance or a frequency, which is known as the Schumann resonance. And that those frequency happens in a core fundamental frequency and two different ordered frequencies. First one is 7.83 hertz. So when you hear people talking about, oh, the human, the Earth is at 7.83 hertz, it's often, as my understanding, coming from the Schumann resonance. And here it is here. Um, there's there's the, the diagram that I got for it. So what I simply did was I just went and tried to map these harmonics by doing this. I went and built, a, put a test oscillator on each frequency. So as you can see, this, is at 7.83 Hertz. Um, the other ones at 14.1 and 20.3. Now, before you jump in and say, oh, you can't hear at 7.83 Hertz, blah, 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 it's a waste of time. Um, first off, if you if you have a low frequency extension, which will play back that, um, the the harmonics or the sub, suborder harmonics, the low end, will definitely be reproduced. If we only created music that was in an auditory domain, um, music would sound very flat. So harmonics give a lot of life and uh, a lot of perception, perceived depth, spatial awareness to the sound. So by adding these frequencies in, whether you can hear them or not, the process is uh, a process of adding harmonic structure to the sound, which 
if you can't hear it, it doesn't matter. If you can't hear it, it has an intended result. So it's, it's again, an experiment. Okay, so what I did was I, I used these and the orbital data around that I made up for these frequencies and applied it and synthesized it as a concept to bring into the track, the journeyman, which I'll now open up in logic as a, as a separate file. Okay, so now we're back at the actual journeyman track. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm now that we've, we've taken this concept of how I created the, the different pads, which has come from the, the, the frequencies of the planets. Um, what I've done is I've taken that concept and brought it back into the song construction of the journeyman. Um, just reflecting again, the idea behind the song of the journeyman is the journey of life. Um, the whole concept of the code is these hidden codes in nature, science, biology, uh, spiritualism, whatever, that connect us and help us on that journey of life. So what I did when I came back to this song was I used exactly the same principle that I've just used in the previous example of the planets, but I've applied the moon and the earth, which are the two things that are creating um, a whole heap of different effects on our human physiology. And so what I ended up doing was I ended up getting a sound very much similar to this. Uh, let's play it. So that's it. That is the sound of the moon and the earth frequencies with an orbital data put on it and azimuth, including the Schumann resonances in, into one set of files. And so, look, you could go and pull up a pad on a synthesizer, but for all intensive purposes, this has been constructed from the ground up, very much an artisan approach to trying to put art into conveying the message around what the song for the journeyman is. So then, I have a bass which goes throughout the whole song. So it's meant to represent this journey of life has always got these gravitational effects, changing our periodic cycles, our moods, everything, our water retention, and they're very important. So that's why this sits underneath everything. And when I pull that off, so it's constantly there. Okay, so now that I've got a bed, an underlying bed, which is the sound of the moon and the earth, let's take a look at the guitars here. So um, what I tried to do with the guitars was to create a, a sound, a waterfall sound, and that the sound again, what I was trying to think about when I thought about the part, wasn't just how many licks I can play, um, was sure it was about the melody, but it was a bit deeper, going deeper into the sound. And the depth I was looking for was how do you sort of portray in sound <clears throat> the energy that we actually share when we love someone, when we're doing business with someone, the excitement, the despair. Every time we, we, there's an energetic piece of energy that we leave in places. And so what I try to represent is the delays represent the pieces that we leave of energy that we're leaving out in the universe. And then when they bounce back with someone else's energy, the symphony that creates. So, it might sound all airy fairy, but if I go into the guitar part, which is basically here, here is the dry guitar part, basically talking about, there it is. I don't know if you can hear that. But... So there's the dry guitar. Put the delay on. And you can hear it's got a rhythmic cadence to it. Now, if we listen to the first part of the actual part, right up here, and we listen to the timing of it, it's very much a rolling effect. Here. And it's like an overlapping of sound on sound. And then it changes when it goes through to a different state which is coming up here, or it changes up. Okay, the final thing that I did when writing the patch was I wanted to try and recreate that sort of, uh, something that emphasized the earth and moon frequencies. And what I did was I actually um, created a different effect in the same AxeFX preset, which allowed me to get, a, which created a pattern to itself, which sounds like this. Now, believe it or not, that's created live as I'm playing. And how I did that 
was I went to this piece of software called Axe Edit for my Axe Effects. And you might be able to see over here, I have the input of the guitar and it's split into three paths. So the normal guitar goes into an amp and just into a straight EQ. Then there's a, a side chain which goes into a delay, which is the normal guitar delay that you're hearing. That's this, this, this straight delay. But then underneath is this, this big swirl. And the way that's work created is by using a delay, a plex delay, with very long delay time. So we've got, you know, um, we've got a long, long delays, series of, series of long delays happening. You can see here we've got, you know, um, uh, 1429, 982, 1071, 714, which is equivalenting to a, you know, half, half, trip, dot, quarter, tempo. These long delays don't sound like delays though because the delay actually feeds a reverb. These are all, at, you know, basically, 100% mix wet, you can probably see here. Um, and so what's actually happening is the dry sound is being split off. You've got the straight dry, then you've got a parallel delay sitting on another side. Then on the other side, you've got it going into a big wash of delays, which are 100% wet, so no dry sound, going into a big wash reverb. So the reverb carries on because the delays keeps delaying. So it makes the, de the delay sound like it goes forever. And then that feeds into a wah. And the wah, you might see here, the control off the wah that's moving up and down, that's actually fed from an LFO automation. So it's constantly moving, and that's what gives it this sort of, um, sounds like a constantly evolving sound. And so whatever I play goes in there is the input for the delay, which feeds the reverb. Then when I put this together with the actual earth type frequencies, So there's the, there's the earth frequencies. And here comes the guitar in a minute, you'll be able to hear it. That's the guitar. Put the delay in. That delay is this, is, is the delay you're hearing is this top delay here. The swirl's coming from here, and the normal guitar's coming from here. Put the dry in. So you can hear it really bouncing around. I was really trying to create that visualization of, I've now got this planetary sort of like sound, which is a wash creating the guitar sound and the guitar delays. Rather than a guitar with delay, it's meant to be a sound on sound type sound. Um, if I play you the track now, this is the, um, the, the, the guitar part of the track. So I thought I'd play this just so you can see how the, how the guitar part plays with the delays. And then um, if anyone wants the patch, I'm happy to share it with you. Um, just private message me the word Kepler so I know that you've, you've, you've actually watched the stream and I'll send it to you. But this is the patch and this is the guitar part by itself. So you've heard it in the track. This is what it looks like.
Now, the actual rhythm for this is very tribal. It's very, very simple. Um, if I just solo that for you, um, there's not much going on in this track at all because there's so much going on with the other stuff, right? So that's it. That's all the track is with a little bass, which is a very, just a low sub note and you'll hear it just coming in here. There it is. So that's all that's going on in the track, basically. Put the earth frequency in. There's a few little um, shimmer things, like a few bells. Which come up case. And then I've got some guitar effects. So I have these little plucks here to accentuate certain parts of the guitar, which happen, let's just do it. Okay, you'll hear that when I put everything else back in. Because I have to have space, right? If I keep clouding it in, it, it just gets too dense. So I really want the delays to be echoing around and moving around in this track. Um, obviously then when we've got this, the solos coming up here, I, I bring the, the drums in. So where the slide guitar comes in. So I've just got some very basic sort of, you know, um, snare drum rudiments, cating and, and drums going on. And then when the, obviously the, the main Strat solo comes in up here. So that's basically how I put it together. Um, it's, this song is in essence quite simple but um, it does have um, some really interesting context around how I came up with the sounds for the pads, at least in my view, and what the guitar is trying to say and how I'm actually trying to express that guitar through the, the processes that I've used. So um, just to reflect back, the reason why I'm doing this series and talking about at least my album, The Code, and th this process is to, to give you inspiration about trying to how do you get rid of some of the, the rules that you already have around, well, not so much the rules, but if you're finding, if you're struggling to find inspiration and creativity, um, you know, I, I, I just think it's a great way to look at different things that don't match. Look at different universes, different, you know, the, where I've looked at science, uh, biology, science, nature, the previous episodes where I've talked about transcribing colors to rhythmic sequences, Morse code, um, you know, it's fundamental frequencies around the, you know, uh, changing the resonance of the human physiology to, to create an intended psychological result. All this stuff that sounds really, really heady and technical, it's quite interesting where it can take you if you, if you go on that journey. And look, I believe personally that, you know, music has to evolve. Um, we, we've got 30,000 songs a day being added to streaming platforms, at least one streaming platform. And it's very hard. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you express yourself when everyone's, everyone's loading up the same, same types of stuff? And even if it's not, even if you're creating something new and unique, what's the story behind it? How do you create an experience that goes beyond the usual experience? It, Red Horse, see you there. Hey, hey. Here. yeah, I've been here. Oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah, we had uh, we had some technical difficulties there. I don't know what happened, but um, anyway, the joys right. of software and the joys of um, live stuff. So I'll try and piece it together a bit later, so it makes a bit more sense to people. So yeah, so um, you know, would you like to share anything else about your experience, or like you know what you wh how you see the you know the getting inspiration from the spirit or from creativity? Where do you where do you get your creativity and inspiration from? Well, the same the same way. Uh, you have to look when you're doing this type of spiritual work. You have to look at what's outside the box, you know, because everybody, like you said, looks at a certain pattern when they make music. You got the chorus, you got this, you got this, but there's more to it than that. So when people look at in a room and they look at a wall, they just see the wall on the other side. But there's a lot of things in between that wall. And those things are different uh, spiritual beings that I work with that actually they they will come in to this reality and they will actually help me do what I need to do, whether it's uh, 
working with uh, removing negative entities from homes, uh, getting rid of demonic entities, getting rid of negative attachments on people, getting rid of ailments or, or uh, emotional pain. I mean, so all of that is, is uh, not stuff that I was taught by the tribe. All of that came from spirit to be able to do this work. Yeah. And because of doing it that way and not doing it inside the box like every other healer does, uh, we actually enlist the help of the person being healed. So that person works with us. And then these healings become like through the roof. And, and uh, everyone is like 100% successful. There's not a person that goes, oh, that didn't work. Yeah, see, yeah. I, I so, found my, yeah. myself as a musician, oh, well, in my musician part of my, my life, is that, mm -hmm. you know, you reach a certain level of competency and skill and expertise, um, which yeah. is the set of rules that you can sort of, uh, uh, you know, you understand. And you get to this, this group of knowledge. Yeah. And it gets, the, the more you seem to know about a subject or the more you get more expertise in a subject, the harder it is for you to break those rules and go beyond them. And so in my consulting practice, I'd be, I teach people to, uh, look, I have a talk called being an expert at not being an expert. And the point is, it's not about not being an expert. It's about getting the tools to be an expert, but learning how to throw them away and learning how to reassemble them and look at different patterns to be able to synthesize or see things that other people can't. And so every great innovation in the world, whether it's in music or art or technology, has come from someone seeing in the cracks something that no one else saw or thought about another way to do something. And that comes from this constant curiosity. And so I believe that, you know, this process of exploring and trying different things and creating art is what's going to drive music in the future. I think the 30,000 songs being added to Spotify every day, I don't have any issue with Spotify and I don't have any issue with people creating songs. But I do think that there is a new experience that needs to happen in music. I think music has stayed pretty much the same for a long period of time and we've got to evolve it from, here's my song, it's three minutes 30 and I'm going to put it out there with everyone else. Because you know what, that's exactly what everyone else is doing. And so, you know, if you, if you want to create something that's from within rather than from through a commercial lens, you know, if you stick with it, I've found su success from sticking with something that's intrinsically right to me. But look, everyone's different. But my, my message to the people out there that want to create, that are stuck in a rut or that are trying to explore new avenues is to try and open your mind to some of these things. Don't be closed off. Um, you know, it's this, you know, whether you want to try um, different types of meditation, when you, whether you want to try different types of healing, whether you want to look at the, the patterns of science or the planets or whatever I'm doing here, it's um, what I'm trying to show you is that an end result can sound just like nice music, but you can actually come up with a narrative which is much more artistic in the fact that there's a big story behind it because you've gone and looked for that story in your creation. And I just don't think there's any barriers. I, I think you can, you know, you can really can, the barriers are your own mind and what you believe. And if you can actually start to explore that, um, you know, people often say to me, what you're doing is completely insane. And yeah, it, it is to them, but it's not to yeah. me, right? So yeah. someone's definition of insanity is what they don't understand. Um, to That's me, right. it's normal. That's right. So. And people don't understand, you know, sometimes how it works. Like you, you spoke earlier about uh, the frequencies of the planets. You spoke about frequencies in general. And so one of the things that we do in this healing is we raise the frequency of the human being. So we cannot go around living low life frequencies that we've been living and and we feel when we walk around, we feel heavy, you know, and after people experience this type of healing, suddenly they feel super light because they no longer have negative attachments, they no longer have emotional pain. And like I said, we raise our frequencies like normal human being is 7.8 frequent, you know, 7.8 hertz in, in, in a frequency range. But by the time they're done with this type of healing, they're like 15 hertz or higher. And, and uh, because they're that way, they no longer experience uh, you know, physical pain. They no longer experience emotional pain. And they are open up to a whole different world of spirituality. And some people gain the sight of, you know, gain, gain the sight of seeing spirit after they leave here. Well, it's fascinating because you say it, that because if, if you look at the fundamental mode of, of the Schumann resonance, which is 7.83 hertz, and the second yeah, and third, third order harmonics are beyond that. 
um, mm -hmm. is, you know, it's created by this resonance of lightning around the planet between the ionosphere and the, and the actual surface of the Earth. And we're living within that, right? So we're, we're naturally sort of um, attuned to these things and they're making a huge influence to us. And, so, and yeah. look, you know, whether you think it's airy-fairy or not, I, to me, it's, it's, um, it's important to look at these things and make your own decision out of it rather than just shutting it off. Because I do think, you know, people will spend a lot of money on an acoustic guitar because it just sounds that much better. It resonates that much more. And it's like, mm -hmm. but your body is like an acoustic guitar. The woods yeah. are like your body. You can resonate better. And so that's about, you know, it's about cleansing and it's about getting some of this pollution that's going on out of your way so you can start to resonate and start to see these things. So look, you know, that's pretty much, you know, I don't want to sort of rave on for too long about um, the airy fairy stuff that look, the principle of this, this series is really to try and explore new dimensions, new horizons in sound and innovation. And I want to thank Red Horse so much for being here and for contributing on my album. Thank you, Red Horse. Um, I'll Thank put a you. link on the on the stream once I've actually band-aided band -aided it back together um, with yeah. your link of where, where they can find you. Um, and yeah. I appreciate your, your time on the track. Um, if there's any questions, yeah. guys, um, I know there's a few people on the um, on the stream right now. If there's any questions that you'd like to ask me or Red Horse, you know, it has been a little bit of a broken um, stream. But um, if there's anything that, you know, I've skipped over stuff because of some of the technical issues. But if you want to go into, in, into any more questions on anything, you can obviously shoot me later um, or connect on the YouTube link um, or you can, you can punch it here. Otherwise, um, you know, if you can subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. And, you know, we're going to keep, keep up with this series. And, you know, I've got potentially some really amazing international guests coming on talking about some new advancements in sound and engineering and blah, 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 and technology. So thanks for your time and patience today. And, um, you know, I'll see you on the next episode. See you guys. Bye.